Hello! So today we're gonna do a double decker pattern. Mm, no. <laughs> Hi! So today we're gonna do a quilt called double decker. So all you're gonna need is a jelly roll. So the quilt behind me, I used the Denim and Grace Folly Pop from Hoffman, but there are tons of options. You can also use two and a half inch strips from your own stash, from your own fabric. Um, we also have toward at the end, you can see a little sample of one made out of our fabric patch roll kit. Um, our fabric patch rolls consist of 11, 11 inch strips. So it's a little taste of a little bit of everything. So it's really fun, just a variety of colors. There's also lots of other jelly roll options to choose from in both batik and regular cotton fabric. So click the link below or visit fabricpatch.net and you can find a lot of other great, even ones that look like this, some a little softer that are already pre-cut into two and a half inch strips for you. Along with whatever jelly roll of your choice, you're gonna need two and a half yards of an accent piece or a secondary color, depending on how you want your quilt to look. So it can be a solid black, it can be a nice soft print, whatever your desired look is at the end of your quilt is what you're gonna get. But keep in mind, you're gonna see quite a big chunk of it. Make sure you like it. So what we're gonna start with is we're gonna start by sewing strip sets together with our jelly roll. So you're gonna take four. It does not matter what four, mix it up, mish and match it. If you have a hard time making it scrappy, a couple suggestions. Have someone else in your family put sets of four together for you. Someone who's not going to do, ooh, this is a pretty color run of blues. Just scrap it up. Put a light, a medium, a dark, and something else. So like this one is my last strip set I have to sew together. And it is, you know, two mobs, a brown and a purple. But you have a lot. Just make it scrappy. If you don't have someone in your house who can make it super scrappy for you, um, undo your jelly roll, undo your strips, put it all in a bag and just draw four. And whatever four come up is how you're going to sew it together. The only rule that I make for myself is I won't sew two of the same strips together. That's my only rule. Otherwise I just pick it out of a bag because I cannot do random to save my life. So you're gonna make 10 strip sets. Each strip set is gonna have four two and a half inch strips. And they're all gonna look different. Some might look the same depending on if you have a lot of two and a half inch strips of one color from your stash or some of the other. So you're gonna do all of those strip sets. What's really important about your strip sets, make sure your strips are cut accurately. Um, make sure you have a good two and a half inch strip. If you buy pre-packaged jelly rolls, Bolly Pops, whatever, pre-cut strips, they are machine cut which is really nice. It kind of takes out the human error in it. They just stack all the fabric, take these big old choppers and and they cut your strips for you. So make sure they are cut accurately and make sure you're using a consistent seam allowance. For us quilters, again, we always do a quarter inch seam allowance, but if your seam allowance is a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, it's gonna be just fine. Just make sure whatever you choose, you do it through every strip set. So all 10 of these, Strips will be sewn on the same machine with the same seam allowance. Once you have your strip sets, strip sets sewn, make sure you make it press them really nicely. So for me, again, our rule of thumb is press to the dark. In this case, there is one light strip in here. So I made sure that those were pressed to the darks and then just pressed throughout the other way. Um, if you have something like this one, where it's kind of a light, medium, dark. What was more important to me is that this light was pushed to the blue, so I don't have that funny shadow. So use your best judgment. It's not going to be the end of the world. Just press them nicely. Press your seams open. Use some, use your mister filled with best press. It's good to have a nice crisp strips when you're all done. When you are done, you're going to measure the width of your strip set. Mine are eight and a half inches by 42 ish. What you're gonna do that two and a half yards of accent piece, you're going to cut into eight and a half strips or whatever the size the strip is. So I would suggest make your strip sets first, press them all, measure them all. 
make sure they're all about the same size. If you're off by quite a bit, I would suggest rip those out, re-sew them together, maybe ditch that whole strip set and just say, oh, nope, not my day. You'll just have a few X less blocks than everybody else, and that's okay. So measure your strip sets. Whatever this measurement is, is the measurement of your accent strips. So mine are all pressed and measured and they're eight and a half inches. So I have 10 eight and a half inch strips of my accent piece. And then the real magic happens. We are going to take one of our strip sets and one of our accent strips and wiggle it loose. And we're gonna do right sides together. And what we're gonna do is we're going to sew, and it really doesn't matter who lays on top. I tend to like my strip set to be laying on top, but it's up to you. We're going to sew a quarter of an inch down the left side and a quarter of an inch down the right side and make kind of a tube. So I'm gonna sew these together and then we'll get to the cutting part. One thing I wanna make sure you guys realize when we're making our tube, it is important that your strips are laying flat onto each other. We don't want to line it up so much that we create a little like pocket in here. It will create um, more of a warped half square triangle when we're all done. So we wanna make sure when you lay everything down to make sure your strip sizes are cut correctly, that we can lay our eight and a half inch strip directly on top of our eight and a half inch pieced strip sets and that everything's gonna line up perfectly here. And as we sew everything down, we're creating this very flat um, tube. So that's why I tend to like to have um, my strip sets on top as I'm stitching my quarter inch seam because I feel like this is important. If I'm off by a stitch width or two, a thread or two, I'm not super concerned about that. As long as it's within my quarter inch seam allowance, everything's going to be okay. So that's what's really important when you're measuring for your accent strip. Make sure that when you sew these two together, because again we're just sewing a quarter inch down one side and up the other side, leaving the ends open, we want to make sure it's just nice and flat. So once we have all of our strip sets sewn, so again, we've taken a strip set, right sides together, created this nice flat tube. Next thing you'll need is you'll need your, you will need your ruler. Your ruler, what's important is it needs to be long enough. So I would really say you probably want your 24 inch ruler. A 12 inch ruler isn't quite long enough, but what's really important are these little lines in here. So you've got 60 degree, 45 and 30 degree lines on your ruler. So we're gonna use the 45 degree lines on this ruler. So you don't have to purchase a specialty 45 degree triangle ruler. You can use the ruler you have in your sewing room, have had for years, was gifted by a friend, given to by your mom. You'll need one of those. You'll need a rotary cutter and a seam ripper. So let's get to this really cool cutting trick. All right, so with your four, your six by 24, it can be a four by 18, anything you want. Just again, what's important are these lines right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mark, I'm gonna take my wet erase mark and I'm gonna mark it for you. So what's important about your ruler is there is a right side and a wrong side to your ruler. The right side of your ruler, you can see all of your numbers, all of your letters, all your words, everything right up and close, you can read it perfectly. If it is on the wrong side of your ruler, one, it's probably where all your grippy stuff is, and two, your numbers are backwards and your words are backwards. So that is the wrong side of your ruler. Flip that bad boy over. If you cannot read your 45 just by looking at it, you have your ruler flipped. So I'm just gonna take my other ruler here and I'm just gonna draw this line. Again, this line is on your ruler already. I'm just gonna put this line on here so you guys can see it better, because it's important. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, the other thing you can do at the very ends, um, your pieces might not line up perfectly. You can always trim that off if you want to so you are ensuring where you're cutting. But what you're gonna do, your 45 degree line right here, and again, I can read 45 perfectly. I'm going to line that line up on the bottom of my seam 
or excuse me, bottom of my strip, right on that raw edge right there. And I'm going to scoot that bad boy over because I'm going to be cutting right here. I'm going to give myself a little bit because again, I didn't trim off anything, any raw edges on this end. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of room. I have plenty of room. I could probably give myself an inch right there and still have room at the very end. So 45 degree line lined up at the very bottom, going up to a point, pressure and cut. This is going to be waste. You could probably do something with it later. It makes a really cool 90 degree triangle. I'm going to scoot this down and again with my 45 degree angle I'm going to use the 45 degree angle on the top. So let me grab my marker again for you. I'm just going to draw that line a little better so you guys can see it better. There's always going to be a 45 degree line on the top and the bottom of your ruler no matter the length of your ruler. So what we're going to do is we're gonna make sure the point down here is where the edge of our ruler is. And our 45 degree line, again, is gonna line up right along the raw edges of our fabric up there. And we're gonna scoot it down a little bit. So we have it perfectly a point right there. And we are perfectly straight up here. Take our rotary cutter and cut. And there's our first triangle. You're going to get four of these from your strip set. We're going to turn this down. We're going to then twist our ruler again. So we haven't flipped it. We haven't turned it upside down. We can still read everything perfectly. We're going to line 45 degree line up on the bottom. Make sure there's the point and cut. There's triangle set number two. Move it down again. We're going to just twist our ruler. We're going to line our 45 degree line up right here on top of our strip. Scoot it down so we have a perfect point here. And cut. And one more time, twist our ruler. We can still read all of our numbers and our words. We're going to line our 45 degree line up here and we've got a perfect point here and cut. And I want to mention one thing. When I am cutting for my point, I am actually at the end of my strip right here. There is a seam right there, but that's where our seam ripper is for. Okay, so I'm going to cut one more strip so you guys can see. I'm going to cut it with my light piece on top. Maybe if those of you who are struggling the first time, maybe you can see it better with this one. So we have all of our 45 degree angle 
triangles cut. And then with your seam ripper, I have the same fix seam, seam ripper that has a seam ripper on one side and a stiletto on the other. The stiletto is really nice when you're sewing um, a bunch of pieces together. And then these little rubber ends, or if you're cutting through your stitches to make fast work, these will rub out those little bits of thread that are kind of sticking in there. And then it'll also rub out your stitch holes if you feel like, oh, those stitch holes are not needing to be there. So it's super nice. So what we use with our seam ripper is when we are cutting our 45 degree angle, again, we are measuring from edge of strip to edge of strip. We are not caring where our seam allowance is. So we have to rip out this tiny little seam right up here at the top of our triangle. So we're just going to just take a little seam ripper, rip those threads out. And then we have a perfectly large jumbo size half square triangle. And these half square triangles, so we've started with an eight and a half inch strip set, our half square triangles are gonna end about 12 inches, which is super cool. So we're gonna cut all our triangles, take out our little stitch up here at the corner, and then all you can do is press. And then you're gonna come out with, you're gonna get 40 half square triangles like this. So you will arrange your quilt five by eight to use all 40 of them. Um, there are a ton of different options on how to lay out your blocks. This is some of them. I'm gonna have Eliza come back and do some switching so I'll have a bunch of different pictures for you. It's just like if you've ever done a log cabin before, just any way you twist it, it's gonna look totally different. For me personally, this quilt is very fast, very versatile. If you have a younger person in your life, maybe you yourself are a brand new quilter, and maybe all you've kind of done is a jelly roll race and some really simple stuff. If you have done a jelly roll race, you can do this. All this is, is again, all you're doing is stripping strips together, then sewing them together one more time, and then doing a really fun ruler trick. And by putting that wet erase marker line on here, not just so it's easier for you to see, but you personally in your sewing room, you'll be able to automatically see, is my green line? Is my orange line? Is it lined up? Am I ready to actually cut? Can I see? Because again, from the back of your ruler, you can't really see that line very well. So that's just the important part when you're using your ruler. Your six by 24 inch ruler is so versatile. There isn't really a need to purchase special triangle cutting tools. So it's really nice. And for me, if you worry like, oh, I'm a brand new quilter, I just don't know. Here's the trick. When you are putting all of your blocks together, um, you don't really have any points to match. You have just your basic intersections of your points to match and that's it. And as long as you twist your blocks appropriately, you won't ever have to line, you know, this up, which is a doozy for any quilter. So just keep in mind when you're putting these together, be cautious. How many intersections, how many nestling of your points do you really want to put together? So keep that in mind when you are putting your blocks together. Also, when you press your blocks um, open, it doesn't matter. All of my blocks are actually pressed to my secondary color. You can press them all to your strips. It is entirely up to you. It really does depend what you choose for your secondary. If you're choosing solid black, absolutely press everything to that black part. If you're doing something white, very, very light, I would just press it to your strips because you're going to create that little shadow of your little quarter inch seam allowance and it's never ever going to go away. Um, and then you'll also notice you have these little dog ears again. You're going to take your scissors or in this case, I don't have scissors right next to me. Um, any sharp scissors and you're just going to snip these little bad boys off. So now you have this really nice point. The important thing about snipping off those little dog ears is when you start sewing all of these together, it's just one less thing you have to worry about. One less bit of bulk you have to worry about in those intersections. So it is important to trim those little guys off. It's, um, they are no need. Um, secondly, or I don't know what number I'm on now, but this quilt is so versatile. If you just have a basket of strips, You've got some one and a half inch strips, you've got some two inch strips, you've got some one and three quarter inch strips. Heck, you might even have some three inch strips. It really doesn't matter. You can just sew them together in your strip sets, just making sure, because again, when we started, what the important part was, was this measurement. So if you can insist that you can get a nine inch strip out of just different size strips, you can do the same thing using scrappy strips and it looks so different, but so cool. 
because you might have two little little strips here, you might have a bigger, chunkier one here, and the block across from it might have a whole lot of little ones and one big one. So it really is something that you can definitely use with pre-cut strips that you have at home or the pre-cut strips that your you know nephew have give it, has given you that I really want a strip quilt made out of this. This is something versatile or it's something, go through your stash. Work through those organized bins you've created in your sewing room to weed out some of those strips that you know you might not use soon and let's just get something done, make you feel good, you've used something from your stash so that you can go to your quilt store and pick out a new project. So last thing I wanna talk about, so um, again, watch the very end. We're gonna have a few other um, versions laid out for you to see what it can definitely look like. Oh, that's the wrong way, here we go. And um, also I'll get it all sewn together for you so you can see. But lastly, um, you might wanna think about borders. You don't have to, again, if you like this the way it is, the quilt is the perfect size, you've maybe doubled up and created um, 80 blocks, whatever that is to you, you can choose to border or not border. It's super subjective. Um, the other thing you can do is just think about what you're, what you want to do. For me, I feel like a little two and a half inch strip of my accent piece would be really cool. So I think that would look really good. And then you could choose some other fabrics, you know, things that you might audition at your local quilt store. You might audition at home. Whoops. Depending on what you choose, it will definitely highlight and showcase different pieces of your quilt. Here's another one. If you feel like it got too masculine, bring out some of these purple bits. Some of those busier ones that we weren't quite sure we liked that really pulls out some of those browns and taupey colors. That's really pretty, the grays. Okay. So borders are super subjective, subjective, whatever you want. If you want your quilt to be a little bit bigger, sometimes it's easier to throw two or three borders on it than to make all your blocks one more time. And some people, you might not be able to get two of the same jelly roll depending on what your quilt shop carries or what is in your stash at the moment. So really cool. This is one of my favorite kind of go-to fast projects. I always have fabric that I can cut into two and a half inch strips. I always have a drawer in my sewing room full of two and a half inch strips and some other ones. So to be able to sew those together, create something really cool is definitely a bonus. So for you guys, if you're making this with me, if you have maybe made it before, again, this technique I think has been out there for a while. I just think it's something that is really neat and really special to share. If you've made it, if you are making it now, share with us what you're working on. Go to our Facebook page. Um, it's Fabric Patch WA. Um, I'll link our Fabric Patch Facebook page below so you can share with us what you're making. Um, if you're not on Facebook, that's okay. Shoot me an email. Do info at fabricpatch.net. We'd love to see your quilt. We'd love to see your color combinations. And we can share that on our Facebook page for you and also in our customer's inspiration page on our website. I hope you enjoyed Double Decker with me today. Again, it's one of my favorite quilts just to throw together. It's gonna to take you longer to cut your two and a half inch strips than it is to gonna make this quilt. Um, bonus number two about Double Decker, there is no trimming our blocks down. We just get to sew our strip sets, sew our flat tube, do some really cool triangle cuts, and then we're rocking and rolling. I can't wait to see what you guys have created and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching our video. We invite you to leave a comment, hit the like button, or better yet, subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. You can also visit our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest pages, or find all of those things and our online store at fabricpatch.net.